Well, hello there and praise the Lord, everyone. It is so good to be here with you once again. Amen. Pastor Kelvin Luke is here coming to share with you from Dominion Tabernacle and Take It By Force Ministries. Hope all is well. Even during these times of uncertainty, there is one thing that is certain, and that is God is still on the throne. And regardless of what happens or what goes on in the world around us blessed assurance jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine amen and that should be our testimony each and every day that god is good and he reigns now and forevermore listen i'm gonna jump right on in here excited about this series the fruit of the womb the fruit of the womb I believe in this hour, God is really challenging the church to, to take a stand for the most vulnerable, and that is the unborn, the unborn, the fruit of the womb. And so over the past uh, couple of weeks, I've been breaking down the importance of understanding that children are precious in the eyesight of God, even in the womb, that the child is precious and we must make sure that we are taking a stand for them in this latter day and hour and so i want to jump right into part three uh, of our session on today uh, last week i talked a little bit about the uh, revelation chapter six verse number five and you can go back and 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 listen to it uh, you can find it on our uh, Facebook page and also on our website, takeitbyforce.net. And if you go uh, and look on our blog, you will find uh, the previous Fruit of the Womb sessions. But on last time, I talked a little bit about the importance of the justice system, the judicial branch, and the role that it has in uh, protecting, protecting the innocent and protecting the unborn and utilizing revelation 6 5 where it talks about one of the horses one of the four horses being uh, the black horse the black horse and we had said on last week that 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 black represents the color of the justice robe that is worn by uh the the judges and so in that in verse 6 there we had ended really our discussion there looking at the last part of verse number 6 uh, where it said in there do not hurt do not hurt it was one of five horses I'm sorry um, four horses yes do not hurt it says there in verse 6 see that thou hurt not the wine and the oil and we talked about on last time how the oil the oil is representative of that which is on the inside of the olive and how the wine is representative of that which is on the inside of the grapes and that there is a crushing that, that the olive and the grape must endure but the oil and the wine which is such a precious commodity that is utilized in the marketplace uh, that was utilized and still utilized in, in Palestine uh, that children are precious in the eyesight of God and they have so much potential so much potential and so just looking at again uh, on today I want to talk a little about a uh, little bit about beware of referrals beware of referrals now when you refer someone it simply means that you are going to send or direct someone based upon their circumstance based upon their situation that if you know of something or someone that might be able to help them, that may be able to bring forth an overall good to the circumstance or situations, you refer them, you send and you direct them in a certain direction for help, for assistance, um, for information, you know, information that may be valuable. Or, you know, or even if it's just to help them in trying to to reach a certain conclusion or a certain decision so there are different avenues or there are different situations that may warrant someone uh, to to receive a referral now going back to our subject the fruit of the womb I want to look at for just a few minutes here a dateline a dateline in American history 
uh, dating back to the 1800s. And when you, when you go back to the 1800s and you look at like the 1880s, uh, abortion was outlawed across much of the United States, the continental U.S. Uh, when you look at around the 1950s and the 1960s, it is estimated that 200,000, anywhere between 200,000 to 1.2 million illegal abortions were performed uh, in our country. Now, in 1969, there was a woman by the name of Norma McCovery, McCorvey, McCorvey. Uh, she was a Texas woman. And she was a young adult. She was a young adult uh, who grew up in very, very difficult and impoverished circumstances. Uh, her socioeconomic status was not the greatest in the world. And the reason why this particular lady uh, is such an important part of American history, especially as it relates to the abortion uh, topic, is that because of her socioeconomic status, uh, she became pregnant at the age of 16, and and a lot of concern, a lot of a lot of uh, what's on my heart beat is for young adults, uh, those individuals who are in that 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 late teen to early 20 age range. Uh, I said, I think in a podcast a few few weeks ago, you know that the CDC reports that over. That one that that a, a half of the sexual transmitted diseases that occur uh, in the U.S. occur in adolescents and young adults, and so that is that continues to be uh, a challenge within our society. But going back to my point is with um, Norma McCorvey, uh, due to her again social economic status, she had become pregnant at the age of sixteen. And because of that, she had she had made the decision to relinquish uh, custody of that child uh, to her to her mother. Now, uh, she had become pregnant soon again after that, and uh, that particular child she had given uh, up for adoption. So here you have this young lady, this young this young adult who had a very difficult socioeconomic uh, environment. Her mother was an alcoholic, it was said, but uh, very, very tough circumstances. And time had went on where uh, she had become pregnant again. And this time around, she was seeking to abort this particular uh, pregnancy. But now, here's something interesting that happened in this woman's life. It, it is said that based upon her circumstance and her situation, that she was referred, that someone knew her circumstance, knew her situation, knew what she was trying to do, and they made a referral. They referred her. In other words, they sent her in a certain direction, in a certain direction. And my first point to you on today is, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're experiencing. Someone out there may be seeking advice, maybe seeking help, maybe seeking some type of guidance or assistance, but be careful, be careful, be careful of whom you tell your business to, be careful of whom you allow to point and guide you in a certain direction because that's all a referral is. A referral is simply a pointing in a direction. It is simply a directing, a sending an individual in a certain direction based upon their circumstance or situation. Now for Miss McCorvey, uh, it was reported what her problem, what her situation was. She was looking to try to get an abortion for this third child that, that, that she was carrying. And so she was referred to two Texas attorneys, two Texas attorneys. 
uh, by the name of Linda Coffey and Sarah Weddington. Now, these two attorneys, okay, they were looking for an opportunity. They were looking for an opportunity to challenge the anti-abortion laws that existed during that time in America. So here you had two attorneys now who were looking for an opportunity. Be careful in this hour. Be careful in this hour that you do not become an opportunity for someone else. Let me say that again. Be careful that you do not allow yourself to become an opportunity for someone else. And the interesting thing about this situation here is that uh, McCorvey was referred to these two attorneys. Now, 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 this presented a great opportunity for these two attorneys to utilize McCorvey's situation to push their own agenda. That's why I just said a few minutes ago, be careful, be careful that you don't become an opportunity for someone else, lest they try and push their own agenda. And you have to be careful because we live in a day and time where everybody's agenda is not a godly agenda. Hmm? Everybody's agenda is not a, a moral agenda. We're living in the day of unrighteousness. We're living in the day of immorality where agendas are being put on the table. Agendas are being pushed each and every day in legislation that are ungodly and are immoral. And so I encourage to the I encourage the one who is listening today, don't become another opportunity for someone to push their agenda through your circumstance and situation. Watch people. Watch people who are to, who prey on others who are trying to simply push their agenda. And so then and so then McCorvey's circumstance and situation, it was the perfect opportunity for these two Texas attorneys who were challenging anti-abortion laws. Let me give a biblical example for a minute here. Because in Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2 verse 1, it's a referral example. I'm just going, I'm going to deal with referrals on today. I don't have a lot of time. But in uh, Mark chapter 2 it says there, And again Jesus entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was reported. Uh, they had yes, they they may not have had CNN or Fox or or MSNBC or or CBS or ABC back then, but they did have reporters back during Jesus's time. Yes, they did. They they did have people on the lookout. They they did have scouters. They did have those individuals who would go and seek out the landscape and look to see what was happening and what was going on. They did have people who were taking notes. Oh, yes, they did. They might not have had a, a ThinkPad or an iPad or, 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 a, or a smartphone back then. Oh, but they, but, they, but they were taking notes and they were able to report back uh, to HQ what they saw and what was going on. So, so, so don't think that the Bible is irrelevant as it relates to news reporting because they, they, they did have their way. They did have their way of, 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 of getting, the, getting the word out. Amen. But it says there that it was reported that Jesus was in the house. Yes, he was. That, that Jesus was on site. That Jesus had stopped by for a little bit. Amen. And you know how, you know, when, when news is juicy, when news is juicy, people, they gravitate towards juicy news, especially if the subject matter is uh, is one who, who has a tendency to draw a crowd for various reasons. And of course, you have to realize and understand that, that anytime Jesus came onto the scene because of his authoritative teaching, be, because of his message, be, because of his persona, he couldn't help but draw unto him those who were in need of help. Those who were in need of 
treatment, those who were in need of aid, those who were in need of information because of, of who he was and who and what he represented to the marketplace. He couldn't help but draw a crowd. Now understand this, now understand this. Everybody in the crowd wasn't always for him. Everybody that was in the crowd wasn't looking to the the to, to, to to seek something from him. But every now and then you had those in the crowd who were just trying to be nosy, huh? Those who were just trying to find a, a way of, of finding false accusation in what he said and what he did so that they could go back and report. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that they could go back and report back to the higher ups. Uh, this is what we saw him doing. This is what we saw him. This is what we heard him say. And so it says there in verse two, it says, and immediately they didn't waste no time. Immediately, many were gathered together. Many were gathered together in so much that there was no, it was standing room only. Ah, uh, Jesus knew how to pack a room out. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. It says, and there was no room to receive them. No, not is even around the door. The door, it was everybody, the crowd was pressed to the door that people couldn't get in. And it says there at the end of verse two, and it says, and he preached but I love, I love what it says about verse number two there because it lets us know what he had to offer. Yeah, he preached, but I like what it says there when it says what he preached because we're living in a day and time. Oh, you got to be careful. You got to be careful of opportunistic preachers. Uh, those preachers who are seeking to, 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 to exploit others and, and, and seeking to gain materialistic wealth based upon uh, built upon the, the opportunities and the needs of others. But it says he preached the word in this hour. In this hour, my brothers and sisters, God is looking for the church to preach the word, not to preach some man-made doctrine, not to preach some, 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 some ideological, some doc dogma that, that has been conjured up by the system. But no, preach God's word. Preach the, the, the gospel of Christ, the G of Jesus Christ. It says, he preached the word unto them. Now, 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 verse three is important right here because this is where this is where it gets into referrals, 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 because that's what we're talking about. Beware of referrals. Beware of how you allow people to point you in a certain direction. First of all, know the direction that they're pointing you in. And make sure that 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 that, that you don't become another opportunity, another statistic. But right here in verse three, it says, and they, now it doesn't say who they were. It doesn't say how, it doesn't indicate where they came from. All it says is they, they, they heard, they heard that Jesus was in the house. And these people that heard understood that Jesus was the real deal. That when Jesus came into the room, Jesus came to help those that were struggling, to help those who were less fortunate. That in the end, that life might be preserved. And so they, they heard that Jesus was in the house. But now when they heard that Jesus was in town, they knew of a man. Uh, just like just like I said in my example, that though that it doesn't say who referred recovery to those Texas attorneys, but it, but they knew her circumstance and situation enough to know that they wanted her to go in that direction. So they, whoever they were, knew enough information about Jesus, and they knew they knew someone who needed what Jesus had to offer. And it says there, and they came unto Jesus. So what they did was they knew that Jesus was in town. They went to the one whom they knew needed help. And it says, and they gathered this individual up and brought him to where Jesus was. You want someone that's going to point you in a direction that's going to that's going to empower you, that's going to help you bring forth fruit in this hour. You can ill afford to be referred by people that are going to point you in the wrong direction. 
Those individuals in verse number three, they knew who Jesus was. They knew what Jesus had to offer and they knew somebody that was sick and needed what Jesus had to offer. And so they referred this one particular individual to Jesus. Yes, they made the referral to Jesus. They made the referral by taking this individual and, and taking them in the direction and going to where Jesus was. That is the referral process. You want someone in your life in this hour that's going to speak life into you, that's going to speak life into your circumstance and situation, and at the end of the conversation, it's not about them, but it's about Jesus Christ working in and through your life. That's the kind of referral you want in this hour. You want a referral in your life that can speak to your degeneracy, that can speak to your embarrassing situation, that can speak to your humility, that can speak over your, over your circumstance and situation. You don't want to be directed in the path of someone who's just going to see you and use you as a, as a, as a stepping stone to another plaque on their wall. Be mindful of referrals. Be mindful of referrals. It says, and when they could not come nigh to him because of the crowd, oh, they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got to do something different here. We got to do something different. We can't, we can't go in the traditional way. Oh, we can't go in the traditional way. But they, they, at that point, they could have given up. No, 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 no. Oh, but they're going to, they stuck with the referral. They wanted to make sure that they got this, that they got this one who was sick of the palsy to the right place. And so they say, and so it says they uncovered the roof. They went radical. Uh, and I'm not talking about radical left. I'm talking about radical right. They, they did what was right. They didn't allow circumstances and wall to wall situations and circumstances to hinder them. In this hour, what God is, wants me to tell you, don't allow your socioeconomic status to hinder you from letting fruit come forth. Don't let embarrassment, embarrassment hinder you from letting the fruit that's in your womb come forth. Let it come forth. Let it come forth and let God bless it. Let God utilize it to be a blessing to the earth realm. What you have to realize and understand that in this hour, you have to learn how, 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 to, how, to, how to go beyond the norm. It says they uncovered the roof. They didn't care who was they, It was a crowd full of people. They didn't care who was looking. They didn't care who was observing. What was on their mind was getting the one who was sick, getting that one down to Jesus. That's a true referral. Didn't mind looking crazy. Didn't mind all eyes being on them. They were trying to get him to Jesus. It says they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up. Thank you Jesus. In this hour you need a referral that's going to help break that stigma off your life. That's going to help break that embarrassment off of your life. That's going to help break that weight off of your life. In this hour you need a referral. That's going to help you move beyond the hurt. Move beyond the pain. Move beyond the sorrow. Some of you, you allow, you're allowing life circumstances and situations to, to, to lock you down. He says, and when they had broken it up. It says they let down the bed where the sick and the palsy lay. And when Jesus, uh, the, that's, that's who they were being referred to. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And he gave them the power. He gave them the authority. He gave that one the authority to get up and walk and live. Unlike in the in the in the example that I had gave earlier, when the referral of of McCover, of McCorvey was made to these Texas attorneys who were challenging anti-abortion laws, they rushed, they raced at the opportunity to file lawsuits against the Dallas County DA at that time, who was Henry Wade. And thus, at that particular moment, what you have is the beginning of what is called Roe v. Wade. 
where Norma McCorvey was known as Jane Rowe. And Henry Wade was the, was the Dallas County DA during that time. And the lawsuit was appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, I'm going to stop right there in reference to the U.S. Supreme Court because I'm going to deal with that uh, in part four. You have to tune in next time. But what I want to see, do you see the difference in referrals? Oh, in the Bible, the referral ended where it says, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And he was able to, 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 to be restored. Versus when you, look at the, when you look at the natural example that I gave with the referral, the referral led right into the hands of those who challenged anti-abortion laws. Because... These attorneys were seeking to make abortion legal. And the biblical example was an opportunity to live the referral. The referral resulted in an opportunity to live. Here in the natural example that I'm giving, the referral began the process in life being snatched legally. In the land, out of the womb. In this hour, God is saying, be careful of your referrals. Lest the very life that is on the inside of you ends up being snatched away. Be careful of the referrals. Oh, I'm, this is gonna get, this, this is gonna be good. I don't, this is this series is gonna be good. I encourage you to to stick with me as we as we go through this. So on next week, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the U.S. Supreme Court and the role that it had in Roe v. Wade. But I want to leave you on today with this again: beware of your referrals. Who refers you and who are they referring you to? <laughs> ah, be careful of who you allow to refer you and whom are they referring you to? Ah, because this one here and this, this, this son here who was sick in Mark 2. Ah, he had the right referral and he had the right one being referred. He was whom he was being referred to. Listen, listen. If you don't know who Jesus is. I want to refer you <laughs> on today. I want to refer you to Jesus Christ. I want to I want to refer you to the one who is who died for you. All he asks is, is that you receive him as Lord and personal savior. If that's you, I don't know what type of lifestyle you may be in. But if you if but if if you know that but if it's, if it's a sinful lifestyle, maybe it's homosexuality, pornography contemplating suicide, contemplating abortion, alcoholism, gambling, fornication, idol idolatry, adultery. Christ died for your sins. If you're ready for a shift, if you're ready for a change in your life, simply pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you came. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord, I, I know I'm a sinner, but I invite you to come into my life. I invite you to come into my heart right now as my Lord and personal Savior. I receive you now, Lord, into my life. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for living now and forevermore that I might have life and have it more abundantly. I receive you now. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer with us, with me, then praise the Lord. If you were sincere, you giving your life to the Lord, email us, email us, go to our website, take it by net. Go to the contact button, click on that button. Let us know what the Lord has done for you on today. We want to, we want to hear from you. 
We also have a free pamphlet that we want to send you to help you on this newfound journey. Well, listen, listen, I want to thank you for tuning in on today. I invite you to join us Facebook Live, YouTube Live on every Sunday at 930. You can find the links on our website, takeitbyforce.net. You can go there and you can find the links uh, for our Facebook and YouTube page. We would love for you to join us on Sundays. Well, listen, I've got to go, but I thank God for you. I thank the Lord for allowing me this opportunity to to minister to you. Again, you can check out our blogs on our website, on my on my on the website. And there's some there are a lot of other encouraging words that you can find there on our website and on our YouTube channel. All right. Well listen, thank you so much. I look forward to hearing look forward to being with you again. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless at his coming. To him be dominion, honor and glory. Lord we thank you. We praise you right now. And we just pray for each and every one that's listening on today. We pray for the backslider. If there's one who's backslidden, Lord, we call them back unto you right now. Father, we bless you right now, oh God. We pray for leadership. We pray for, for families on today, God. Uh, we bless you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you so much for tuning in. Take care, and we'll see you again real, real soon.